Said, no, no, I'm Napoleon. <laughs> oh, hiya, math toilers. You say your folks just loaned you out to Weird Uncle Egbert to help him solve a math problem, and you don't want to go because Weird Uncle Egbert is the one who always makes you finish your creamed onions at Thanksgiving before you get any dessert. And last year for dessert, he served more creamed onions. But your mother wants you to go and tells you to take Roscoe, the chow dog, the one weird Uncle Egbert doesn't like because he chewed up a shoe once while Egbert was wearing it. So now he has to hop everywhere on one foot, which makes him even weirder. And when the two of you get there, Uncle Egbert makes you eat a stale cupcake while he explains the problem. And the stale cupcake is filled with leftover creamed onions. And the problem is, Uncle Egbert needs to be in Detroit in 10 hours, and he wants you to figure out how fast he will have to drive. And you tell him you can't figure it out, and he says, you'd better figure it out. And Roscoe tries to growl, but when it comes out, it sounds like a squirrel with a bad chest cold. And weird Uncle Egbert is getting madder, and his mouth's beginning to leak at both ends. And you tell him you need more information, and he says, why? And you tell him you can't solve the problem if you don't know the distance to Detroit. So he gets a map out of the car, and when you try to unfold it, it tears. And Uncle Egbert's mouth is beginning to leak again. And then you look at the scale on the map, and you measure, and you figure out it's 580 miles to Detroit. And he says, how fast will I have to drive if I need to get there in 10 hours? And then he picks you up by the nostrils. Is that your immediate problem, number cruncher? Well, take a walk in the sun and you'll show your weird Uncle Egbert you got a math head on those shoulders. If the distance is 580 miles and he's got to be there in 10 hours, you divide 580 by 10. And that's how you solve this conundrum. And you tell your weirdo Uncle Egbert he'll have to average 58 miles per hour. You figured it out. Because you asked questions and you never gave up, never gave up, never gave up on math. Of course, Weird Uncle Egbert is going to be madder than ever because the speed limit is 55. Bye-bye, Egbert. See you sometime during visiting hours. Time for Peace of the Pie, the game show where the answers to the questions come from you, kids at schools all over the country. Hi, I'm Reggie Cathy, and this is Peace of the Pie. And now let's meet the host of our show, the effervescent, Miss Beverly Mickens. Thank you, Reggie. I think that means bubbly, too. I'm not sure. Hey, folks, how you doing? We have terrific contestants today, and I think you ought to meet them. Over here on the red team, we have Susie. Hi. Bob. Hi. And captain of the red team, Lynette. The red team. Yay! The red team. And over here on the blue team, we have Rebecca. Hi. Benji. Hi. And captain of the blue team, Tara. The blue team. yee all right, team captains, why don't you come on down with me to the buzzers. And Reggie, tell the kids at home about today's first survey question. Sure thing, Beverly. We asked kids at the Westwood Elementary School in Stillwater, Oklahoma, to name a food that a lot of kids don't like. Beverly, they gave us nine different answers. We need the top five answers on today's piece of the pie. Thanks, Reg. Okay, you kids at home have heard today's first survey question, and team captains, get your hands over the buzzer. Yeah, just like that, because now you'll hear today's survey question. Name a food that a lot of kids don't like. 
Brussels Tara. sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Sorry, ooh, not one of our top five. Lynette. Broccoli. Broccoli is good for 17% of the pie. We will start with the red team for 17% of the pie. Thank you, guys. And remember, guys, the object of the game is to get over 50% of, of the pie. Hey, Bob, name a food that a lot of kids don't like. Pie. Pie. Ooh. Sorry, not one of uh, our top five. Um, Benji. Okay, the blue team. Hi. Name a food that a lot of kids really don't like. Mushrooms. Mushrooms. Ooh, again, not one of our top five. You can also name a meat or vegetable or any other food that a lot of kids don't like. Um, hey, Susie. Liver. Liver is great for 25% of the pie. Already, the red team is up to 42% of the pie. Yes, for you guys. High five, all of you. Good. All right. Blue team, you guys still have a chance to put some points on the board here. Rebecca, a food that a lot of kids really don't like. Peas. Peas. Ooh. I never like peas. I'm sorry. It's not one of our top five. Uh, we're up to Bob now on the red team. Again, 42% of the pie. Your answer could put your team over the top, win the game. A food that a lot of kids don't like. Peppers. Peppers. You know, I don't like peppers myself, but that's not one of our top five. Back to the blue team, Benji, all right? A food that a lot of kids really don't like. Huddle. Huddle, good. Go for it, Benji. Ooh, I see smiles. Give me your answer, please, Benji. Chili. Chili. Ooh, no, sorry. Ooh. Not one of our top five. All right, again, red team, 42%. Susie, your answer could put your team over the top, win the game. A food a lot of kids don't like. Huddle. Huddle, good, do it. I see self-confidence on the red team. All right, Susie, your answer, please. Asparagus. Asparagus is great for 13% of the pie. Red team has won for 55% of the pie, yes. And a chance to go on to the lightning round. Good for you. Uh, the other answers on our survey were seafood caviar for 23% and spinach. Who likes spinach for 22% of the pie? Blue team, you guys played a really good game. I know these answers are kind of hard, but you really hung in there. I'm proud of you. Thanks a lot. And now, red team, you guys have a chance to play the lightning round. Bob, come on over here by me. And uh, Susie, you're going to go in the sound proof booth. Ooh, I hate to say those words. We're going to start the lightning round now, and I'm going to ask you three questions. And you win points based on the number of kids who gave the same answer you gave. Uh, the target number for your team is 100 points, and that means you and your teammate together have to come up with 100 points. And you have 15 seconds to answer the three questions. You ready? Right. Yeah, you look good. Okay. Name things you keep in a box. Close. Close. Um, a kind of fish. Any kind catfish. of fish. I'm sorry, catfish. Something to put on a breakfast cereal. No. Milk. Good for you. All right. You've got to uh, check out the score. Stay right here by me. Oh, it looks good. Okay. Um, we ask you for things you keep in a box. You said clothes for four points. We ask you for a kind of fish. You said catfish for 12 points, bringing your team to 16 points. And we ask you for something to put on your breakfast cereal. You said milk for 27 points, bringing your team to a grand total of 43 points. Yeehaw! Good for you. All right. You can take your seat now. You deserve a rest. Hey, Susie. Hi. Hey, you look good. Good. I tell you, stand right over here. Um, I'm going to ask you the same three questions that I asked Bob. And the target number for your team is 100 points. Bob has already gotten 43 points. So that means you need to come up with 57 points to win this round uh, for your team. Uh, and you have 20 seconds to answer the three questions. You ready? Good. Name things you keep in a box. Shoes. Shoes. A kind of fish. Goldfish. Goldfish. Something to put on your breakfast cereal. Sugar. Sugar. Oh, good answers. Yes, I like those. You look so calm and collected. Let's check out uh, your scores here. We ask you for things you keep in a box. You said shoes for 10 points, bringing your team to 53 points. We ask you for a kind of fish. You said goldfish. Oh, most popular answer for 26 points, bringing your team to 79 points. Very close to the target number already. And we ask you for something to put on your breakfast here. You said sugar. Most popular answer for 35 points. Put your team way over top for 114 points. It's a win for the Red Team. Our winners, the red team, will each receive this slick square one jacket, not available in any store, along with a gift certificate for sneakers. And, to carry all the loot home, the Sport Jester Gym Bag. For winning the lightning round, they also get the square one wristwatch. Our runners up, the blue team, will take home the solar-powered laser hologram calculator and the ever-timely square one watch.
okay, well, I've had a good time from the red team and the blue team. I thank you both all. I thank you all. Thank you for coming to see Peace of the Pie. Goodbye. I always loved mathematics when I was in school. I found it so juicy. Putting you through, sir. Good morning, Deja Vu Travel Agency. Why try someplace new? You what? You're not going anyplace? So why are you calling? Oh, yes, I do agree. The customer is always right. You what? You want me to pick a three-digit number with different digits, and you will show me how to make a sum of nine? All right. Let's see. 356. Those digits do not add up to nine, sir. You what? You want me to scramble the digits? Oh, you mean put them in any order I want. All right. Uh, 653. I'm sorry, sir. Those digits, if I may be so bold, do not add up to nine. What? You want me to subtract the smaller number from the larger number? All right. Three hundred ninety-seven. Um, now add the digits together. All right. Two plus nine is eleven. Plus seven is eighteen. I'm sorry, sir. I get 18, which is not 9. Pardon me? What do I get when I add the 1 and the 8? 9! It worked! Oh, this is wonderful! I'm sorry, we're closed. I'm going to try this again. This is fun. Now, let's see. Pick any three-digit number with different digits. All right. 915. Now, scramble the digits. Okay. 159. Subtract the smaller number from the larger number. Okay. Uh -huh. 756. Now, add the three digits together. 7 plus 5 is 12, plus 6 is 18, 1 plus 8 is 9. It worked! Oh, this is so exciting. I think I'm going to go into a different line of work. The story you are about to see is a fib, but it's short. The names are made up, but the problems are real. It was Tuesday, 9.43 a.m., and the roads were bumper to bumper with New Yorkers leaving town for the weekend. Not this weekend, last weekend. I was working the day watch out of MathNet. The boss is Joe Greco. My partner is George Frankly. My name is Tuesday. I'm a mathematician. <laughs> business in New York goes on as usual, but some of the business that goes on in New York is unusual. We were involved in a series of burglaries and decided to sneak a peek at some scenes from yesterday's show to get our thoughts flowing. Are these reports an indication of a problem to be solved, Captain? Afraid so. There has been a significant increase in burglaries in the 19th precinct, and they need help. Recently? Weekend before last. They average about 10 burglaries on a weekend. They had 18. Our new computer system was not up to speed yet, so we found ourselves plowing through mountains of paper. In so doing, we found the ripoffs involved appliances. Weird appliances. Maybe our people got it wrong. We spoke with a couple of the victims. There are a couple of things you listed as stolen that confused us. Mike? The talking golf ball. What is a talking golf ball? Oh, it was a pip. It's electronic, and it tells you how far you hit it. Gee. You really smacked me, 200 yards. We spoke with another victim who also lost some bizarre items. What did you use your electronic crayons for, Ms. Gooch? To color stuff in my electronic coloring book. Of course. A weekend retreat. We went back to the office, puzzling over the bizarre thefts. We learned that the other victims were also in the Poconos at a resort called Poconos Paradise. George? I got a stirring in my hunch tank. A hunch? You mean a gut feeling? 
You mean you're letting your emotions run away with you? <laughs> no, George, I don't mean that at all. But I do think I may have discovered a scam. I don't follow you, Pard. Think about it, George. The owner of Pocono's Paradise invites a bunch of rich yogurts down for a freebie weekend in the mountains. Uh-huh. And while they're enjoying themselves away from the hustle and bustle of New York City... Of course. The owner of Pocono's Paradise rips off their apartments. That son of a gun. Morning, George. Hi, Pat. How's life in the computer fast lane? Okay, okay. This little gadget's gonna make life a lot easier on us. I hope so. Oh, yeah, I mean, I've got all the squeals from the 19th right here on one disc. Uh, it's the same data we were getting before, but it's easier to sort, so it's easier to look for patterns. Hmm, I see what you mean. Here's something we didn't pick up yesterday. I've highlighted all the victims with the weird appliances. The yogurts? Uh-huh, and look, none of their apartments were forcibly entered. You know, broken into. You're right. Most of the other burglary reports show broken windows or doors. And look at this. Fingerprints. Well, what about them? None were found at the yogurt's apartments. Lots of them were found at the other burglary scenes. We can see the pattern better if I just pick out the yogurt's burglaries. Huh. Have you got their addresses, George? One moment. Street, zip code, victim's name, means of entry, prints. Look at that. What? They all have the same zip code. I tell you, this computer is a gosh send. And the info is a lot easier to transport, too. New unis? Or are you going to the beach? Morning, Captain. I'm glad you stopped by. George and I are going to be out at the office today. That's right, Skipper. We think we're going to pick up the alleged perpetrator and solve the case at the 19th Precinct. I'm glad to hear that. Because on this little disc are the reports from the 20th. They had an increase in burglaries, too. Don't tell us. Let us guess. What? A bunch of burglaries. Uh-huh. Young people. Who are out of town at the same time have the same zip code. None of the apartments were forcibly entered. And they were all in the Pocono Mountains. The Pocono's paradise. Why do you say that? We've got a hunch that the guy who owns that joint is behind all these burglaries. And that's where we're off to, Captain G. See you around. We picked up a station wagon from the NYPD motor pool and left Manhattan for a small town called Landfill, Pennsylvania, just beyond the Delaware Water Gap. The owner of Pocono's Paradise was a man named J. Thurlow Muck, a man who was about to change his name from letters to numbers if our hunch was right. We wanted to find out how this operation worked in the hopes of getting some evidence. We dressed as prospective home buyers and pretended to be husband and wife so as not to raise any suspicions. This must be the place. Muck at your service. <laughs> How may I make your life more livable? I'm Eve Gideon. This is my husband. Adam Mathnet. Beg pardon? <coughs> Clatret. Clatret. Uh, Clatret. Sorry, that's uh, the way we cough on the Upper East Side. Well, Adam and Eve Gideon. Welcome to paradise. Pocono's paradise. <laughs> How'd you hear about us? We... Seen our ads in newspapers? No, we... Magazines? No, we... Radio, television, outdoor boards? <laughs> it was an invitation right in our mailbox. Oh, our direct mail campaign. Uh, may I see your invitation? We, uh... We... We lost it. Uh, my wife lost it. No, oh, I didn't lose it, dear. You lost right, it. Right, uh, her wife lost it. Let me check my computer. Uh, you say the name was... Uh, Gideon. Gideon. Yeah. 
I show no one named Gideon here. Could it be under another name? No. What's your zip code? One, one zero, zero zero two three. Two. <laughs> Been married long? <laughs> it's two. One zero zero two two. I'll cross-check the invitation by zip code. Maybe we misspelled the name. Your computer can find us by our zip code? Oh, yes. Yeah, but it's not there either. No name's close to Gideon. No matter. Now that you're here. Would you like to spend a weekend in paradise? Adam and Eve? Sure. We'll try anything twice. <laughs> Let me check our schedule, see when we can fit you in. <laughs> well, well, well. How's this coming weekend for you? Perfect. <laughs> now, as to accommodations, do you have children? No. Yes. Well, we do, but they don't amount to much. We won't be bringing them. <laughs> <laughs> Let me print your invitation. What's your address? Let's use my address, Eve. You each have an address? Yes. We fight a lot. <laughs> it's 229 East 56. Excellent. Has the computer age made marketing easier, Mr. Mock? It has indeed. It's not as wasteful to reach prospects as it used to be. Computers are very helpful, especially with our direct mail campaign. Direct mail? Don't you mean junk mail? Direct. It's mail sent directly to the people we think are most likely to be browbeaten into buying one of your condos. <laughs> Here you are, Mr. Gideon. Just present this invitation at the desk when you arrive Saturday morning and everything will be taken care of. Will we see you this weekend? Well, I can't guarantee that. I'm a very busy man on weekends. But my sales staff will be able to assist you. I'll bet you are busy on weekends. Oh, yes. Weekends are when I make the big money. <laughs> uh-huh. You are very kind, Mr. Mock. Not at all. We here at Pocono's Paradise think you will have such a wonderful time, you will buy one of our little weekend homes. Well, you can be assured we'll give it our careful consideration, Mr. Muck. Let's go, Pat. It, Pat. Pat. It was her maiden name. Listen to the activities you get at Pocono's Paradise, Pat. Swimming, horseback riding, tennis, clog dancing, unicycling, log rolling. After a strenuous weekend like that, we'll have to go back to work to rest. Uh-huh. Too bad we're not going. Yeah, we'll have my apartment staked out instead. So when J. Thurlow Muck comes to rob it, zap, we got him red-handed. I wonder if Captain Greco has checked out those other burglaries at the 20th Precinct. He certainly did, because Captain Greco is one buttoned-down cop. And we were correct, right, Skipper? The victims were all out of town? Yes. And we were right that they were all in the Poconos' paradise, too, right? Wrong. What do you, what mean, do you mean, wrong? Wrong. Incorrect, negative. Well, where were they? Atlantic City. Atlantic City? There are no heart-shaped tubs in Atlantic City. All the bathtubs there are shaped like roulette wheels. And they weren't yogurts. They were marps. Marps? marps? Middle-aged rich people. All the data's on this disc. Get cracking, math netters. Only get it right this time, OK? I don't get it, George. I was sure Jay Thurlow mucked with our man. Me too, Pat. But the captain is right. It's all right here. These people, all middle-aged, were in Atlantic City, staying at Donald Trump's new casino, the Tower of Babel. Heard of it? I don't pay much attention to gambling casinos, George. It's a 127-story round building with no elevators. How do you get to your room? A helicopter flies you to a little pad on your individual terrace. To go down, you use a fire pole. That's ridiculous. Yes, but fast. George, how are the people contacted for this weekend outing? Uh, 
I don't know. There's no information here on it. That's because that question isn't on the regular police report. Call some more of the victims, George. Okay. Hi, computer people. I heard you solved the burglary case in the 19th, Beth. We thought we had, Benny, but not yet. Then last weekend, there were a bunch more rip-offs in the 20th. Were they related? Don't seem to be. Can I be a service? Sure. Tell me what Pocono's Paradise and the Tower of Babel have in common. Easy. Bad architecture. <laughs> you know, Benny, there is something you could do for us. Check out a man named J. Thurlow Muck. See if he has any kind of criminal record. He owns Pocono's Paradise. I'll get on it. Pat, I spoke with four of the victims. Afternoon, George. Afternoon, Benny. You know what they said? Hello? What did they say, George? They had all received invitations directly in the mail, just like the Poconos people. Benny's going to check on Mr. Muck. Just because he sells real estate? Just because he might have a connection in Atlantic City. I'm out of here. Hey, uh, George. You see what the Giants did to the Rams on Sunday? It was just an exhibition game. Yeah, the Rams are some exhibition. 66 to 3. You know how the Rams got their three points, George? Field goal. Salvation Army. <laughs> Any breaks on the heist yet? Hey, we just got started on it. Give us a break, Captain Greco. OK, you tell the mayor to give me a break, and I will give you one. The mayor? Why is the mayor involved in this? The mayor is a very hands-on kind of guy, Pat. Yeah, and right now he has his hands on my throat. His son was one of the latest victims, and he is hot. Yep, here it is right here. He lost his stereo, his TV set, his rechargeable checkbook, and his gas-operated slippers. Push, folks, push. I ran a quick check on our Mr. Muck, Math Netters. And he has a record as long as your arm, right? And vast gambling ties in Atlantic City. And he's done time for scamming in the past, right? He's as clean as a hound's tooth. The hound's what? Tooth. No criminal record? No criminal record. He's in the Pocono selling condos every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. An ironclad alibi. J. Thurlow Muck is not our man. One hundred percent of Square One TV is a production of the Children's Television Workshop.